Once divers become aware of the countless dangers lurking underwater, they begin to think how to make their favorite hobby the safest it can be. And here, they face a difficult choice. Whom can they trust to further their diving education? Which system best incorporates the maximum amount of necessary skills? Extremes are good, for sure. Adrenaline and all that. But being alive is good, too. And hopefully for a long time. The challenging training system of GUE, Global Underwater Explorers, is well known within the diving community. Some welcome it. Some call it military bravado, a boot camp. But the fact remains, many divers, including Russians, more and more often welcome this demanding approach to diving. When I was coming here, I thought it would feel like being in some kind of military forces, the U.S. Navy or something like that. But the people here turned out to be very positive and open, always ready to help, to give advice. I'm very happy to be here. It all started when a group of American enthusiasts studying the underwater cave system in Florida were trying to find adequate training for other underwater explorers who were going to be involved in the project. Unable to find any organization that would include the teaching of all their requirements, they created a training system of their own based on the strict rules of cave diving. During the early years of their existence, they were recognized by their distinctive logo, Doing It Right. With time, their distinctive requirements were supplemented by distinctive equipment manufactured under their brand. Since 1998, this organization has been known as Global Underwater Explorers. I saw careers rise quickly in other agencies where people would get, well, almost to an instructor level within one year and with the minimum number of dives and minimal experience. Well, that makes education just pure fiction. There are two things you can do to deal with this. Either you find a person who puts more into the training than what his organization is willing to, or find an organization that puts the quality of education first. By becoming a GUE student, one commits to a certain framework of behavior, not only underwater, but above it as well. Students who wish to enroll in a GUE certification course must be non-smokers. Smoke, if you're a smoker, your weakened health might be hazardous to your underwater buddy. And that's unacceptable. Stop smoking. Go diving. Being physically fit is a primary requirement for students of this training system. Here, theory intertwines with practice and includes not only underwater classes, but also learning to swim 300 meters in 12 minutes and to swim underwater to a minimum distance of 15 meters. In many ways, this is a philosophy where everything is connected. You can't separate equipment from the skills and the skills from the knowledge. All these things complete each other, creating a comprehensive system. Teamwork is one of the main principles of this approach. Not only underwater, but above water too. No GUE skipper will be at a loss for what to do if the diving party does not surface on time and in the right place. The dives are planned so meticulously that by the end of the course, divers can dive without a computer, using only a depth meter and an underwater watch. All divers must have the same gas in their tanks and the same equipment. Flashlights, a main and a spare one, are an integral part of GUE gear regardless of what time of day the dive takes place. These flashlights are used as an additional means of communication underwater and can also be used to signal one's position to the party on the surface. Solo diving is strictly prohibited by this organization. My buddy is my backup brain. He's also carrying my backup gas, right? I'm, I'm a human. While I would like to be perfect, I recognize that I'm not and I recognize that I've never done a perfect dive. And while I might aspire to do a dive one day that's perfect, I'm also a realist and I recognize that I am human and I am going to make mistakes. 
And so when I do dives that are demanding or complex, I want to surround myself with other people that have also trained and prepared and that are, have a common goal and a common interest in the outcome of the dive. This group of Russian students is not the first for the GUE instructor Bob Sherwood. He likes the meticulous approach Russian divers bring to mastering the new skills that they are being taught. So we had some really glowing moments, and it's some really good stuff, and then there, we did definitely have some areas that we could do some work on, use a little bit of improvement. But overall, it's a really good starting place. As a rule, there are no incidental divers in groups like this. Everybody here has made a fully conscious choice to take this course. In spite of devoting much attention to theory, the most challenging part awaits students underwater, learning to swim differently. GUE teaches their divers to maintain a horizontal body position that allows minimal water resistance during the dive and more control during descent and ascent. Another skill without mastering which you won't be certified by this organization is the ability to achieve neutral buoyancy or the ability to stay at the same depth for a certain period of time. Special kicking techniques, which originate in cave diving, are another essential basic skill of this training course. These kicking techniques are useful during wreck diving and generally make you feel more comfortable underwater. They are also beneficial for the environment since they help divers avoid damaging the coral reef with their clumsy fin movements. I feel like a person who has been shown what skills he lacks and what he should have known to be able to dive safely, keep things under control, and so on. These guys don't dive on air at all. They prefer a breathing gas mix called nitrox, which has a different ratio of nitrogen and oxygen than the air we breathe, so that decompression would take less time. If they dive deeper than 30 meters, then they'll only dive on trimix. And if given the choice, they would recommend trimix for as shallow as 21 meters. Once certified by Global Underwater Explorers, divers need to show proof of maintaining diving practice at their qualification level. Otherwise, their certificate expires. The same applies to GUE instructors. I don't think that the requirements of the organization are, are severe. I think that they're uh, necessary and practical towards becoming a safe and competent diver. I can understand that everybody has a different perspective. Uh, I appreciate and respect other people's perspective, but it isn't ours. Uh, we know what it takes to do demanding diving and having decades of training experience, we also ultimately understand what it takes to get people to a certain level. Their fiercest critics call Jared Jablonski and his followers cave divers, who brought the extreme requirements of cave diving into open water and then created a training course that caters to that, then developed their own equipment, just a clever marketing strategy aimed at divers with big wallets. People have a lot of bad things to say about you. They're paying a whole lot of attention to what you're doing. Uh, if they didn't care about what we were doing, they wouldn't say anything. They would be disinterested. And the fact that they've most, almost all of them have come out with programs to copy our classes uh, or make an attempt to copy our classes is an indication that they're very focused uh, about what we pursue. There's a part of them that says, those guys are, are right and we should start to move in that direction. And I think that's good because we're a nonprofit organization designed to improve diving uh, in general for everyone and so the more people that sign on to that the better and they can call us names all they want along the way that's fine. But so far their business is thriving. The GUE training system is so unique and unusual that most divers who take the course even those who already had extensive diving experience admit that after training with GUE they felt as if their eyes had been opened underwater. Although learning new skills was not always easy, many insist that it's the most comprehensive diving course available today. Probably many in the diving world will disagree with this statement, but facts remain facts. During all of GUE diving history, there has been only one fatality, which happened during an aggressive dive. By comparison, in 2007 alone, some 20 recreational divers from different countries have perished just in the Egyptian Red Sea area. We can choose to argue or not, but there will always be those who will continue to dive at their own risk, cheap and dirty, and those who will prefer to shell an extra buck for the extra knowledge, skills, and a safer mix in their tanks.
to each their own. But for fairness sake, everyone who is planning to go diving must know that they have a choice.